Hello and welcome to Orient Today. I am Joe Johnson. And I'm Tracy Woodrum. Thanks for joining me again this week. Thank you, Joe. It's glad, I'm glad to be back. Spring is here. Yeah. Some nice weather is returning, even though the weekend was sort of 50-50. Did, did you do anything exciting over the weekend? Well, I did go to Flower Fair. Yeah? Uh, and I took a break from doing yard work. I have the, the wounds to, to <laughs> prove it. But, yeah, took a break from doing that and walked down because, you know, I'm just a few blocks away. And so that was kind of the highlight of the, of the weekend for me. Yeah, I went down on Saturday and the weather was just cold and gloomy and misty. And I tried to shoot some video, but I'm like, oh, this is depressing. Yeah. Even though it didn't <laughs> seem to affect the turnout, there was a lot of foot traffic. Parking was kind of hard to come by. Right. Um, so I said, you know what, I'll come back on Sunday. So I went <laughs> back on Sunday beautiful I, I can't believe the difference right? between just the two days <laughs> Tr foot traffic was great uh, lots of flowers that was a that was a, a complaint last year uh the flower fair didn't have many flowers <laughs> right. last year. that's right that's and uh right. so going back this year they made an effort to make sure there were lots of flowers out there and so lots of photo opportunities and that brought a lot of people in. And so, yeah, especially on Sunday with the sun out, everything was vibrant and colorful. And uh, it was just nice to see people in downtown, roaming the streets. And uh, did you pick anything was, up? What did you do while you were there? Yeah, I picked up a few things. Well, flowers, I had to go get, there was this basket, hanging basket of yellow flowers that was just beautiful. It was calling my name. Yeah. I had a, the perfect spot for it. Um, on the side of my house, um, which is, you know, I'm, I'm on two sides, two streets, so it's still another front. Um, <laughs> but there was um, some great balsamic there. Um, we got, uh, they had this cookie dough that, you know, is edible, edible cookie dough. Yeah, which yeah. I don't know. I mean, ed cookie dough has always been edible in my book. Well, they don't <laughs> recommend that you, well, you <laughs> with the raw eggs and everything, they, they're like, yeah, don't I, eat I know, raw but I mean, dough. I've been doing it for decades, so I think. <laughs> I I think I'm okay, we but, survived. but, yeah. uh, but they had some really, um, really good flavors. So the kids and I sampled and then picked out the favorite, the favorite one. And, um, and of course my kids had to go and hold the puppies. They, oh, I don't know if you saw man, the puppies were that were down draw. there. Oh, they were so cute. <laughs> oh, they were blind and I think deaf as well. Were but, they? Yeah, but they were oh, adorable. They were rescues. And, yeah, I uh, stopped and uh, I, as I like yeah. to call it, I needed some puppy therapy. Yeah. So I went in there and <laughs> it just made my day. Yeah, they were so <laughs> cute. So Yeah, so that was a yeah. fun event that benefits the Orient Art Center. They had a lot of art there and everything too. So I, I think it was a really great event. It yep. turned out really great. It was. There were so many. I, I won't bore you with all the things that I bought when I was there, but <laughs> <laughs> lots of great vendors. So it was it was a, a good event once again. That's awesome. And I hope yep. all the downtown businesses benefited and all that. So yeah. Uh, another thing that happened uh, recently, uh, we were invited to go down to Blant Sims Elementary. Uh, the student students there, particularly the student council, mm -hmm. uh, they had a, a cereal drive and the school raised over 400 boxes of cereal. I think they said it was like 450. So their prize, their surprise was to line them up in the hallways and knock them down like dominoes. Oh, how fun. And uh, yeah, so it, it was really cool. The kids got a really big kick out of it. And uh, I don't want to toot my own horn, but beep, beep, uh, <laughs> they had a false start. And I was standing there with my camera and someone bumped the cereal and it started to go. And I dove and stopped it before the whole <laughs> thing went down. And oh. they thanked me and set it back up and then they did it for real. So, um, so that was a lot of fun. And then uh, all those boxes of cereal that were collected are gonna be donated to Blessings in a backpack. Okay. Uh, because, you know, a lot of, a lot of students the only meal they might get is the school lunch right. that's provided at school. And throughout the summer, meals might be hard to come by. Yeah. So Blessings in the Backpack do a nice job of uh, providing students with food to uh, get them through the summer. So. That's great. That's a great program. I don't know if you've ever been to help pack up the bags. I've been for there. That. Yeah, that yeah. Is, yeah. It's, it's that's impressive. fun. That's a fun time as well. Yeah, so. yeah. And then, you know it's spring when the uh, car cruise season kicks off. Uh, I just recently found out that Gowling Buick GMC had their first uh, car cruise of the season. Now, there are a lot of car cruises going on in the community, but what's special about the Gowling Buick car cruise is every event is a fundraiser. It raises funds for a nonprofit organization. Uh, each one is different. So the kickoff was for Love, Inc., 
Okay. And so the way it works is Gowling provides the grill and the food and everything, and uh, Love Inc. provides the volunteers to cook up burgers for the visitors. Okay. And all proceeds that are raised uh, through that and 50-50 raffles, uh, that all goes to Love Inc. So Gowling does a really nice job of, of helping out the community uh, and hosting this, this car cruise on Lapeer Road there. Uh, the first week, turnout was a little light because it's you know still early in the season, right. um, but they have many more uh, planned throughout the season. As a matter of fact, on Saturday, June 17th, they're having their first what they call a auto rally. Um, where I think it's going to be like a poker run or something. I'm oh. kind of curious how that's going to work. That's the first time they've done something like that. Uh, on Saturday, July 15th, they're going to move the car cruise over to Miracle Field uh, in Friendship Park, and that's going to be a, razor, a, a fundraiser for um, Miracle Field. Okay. And so that's for the main maintenance and upkeep over there. And if you haven't been to Miracle Field, you've got to check it out. It's really beautiful. Uh, then on Saturday, July 29th, the cruise moves to downtown Lake Orion. That's the Kids and Cops yes. Cruise. Uh, where they raise money for the programs that the Lake Orion Police Department does with Blanc Sims Elementary. And they go to, is it Target? I hope I get this right. They go to Target at, around Christmas time and they go shopping Shop with kids. Shop and so, with the hero. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that cruise helps support that. And then they wind down their, their uh, cruise season on Saturday, September 16th with their super cruise. And uh, I talked to Bill Kokanos who... Uh, says they got some really big things planned for the Ooh. Super Cruise. They might bring in maybe some athletes and celebrities to do some autographs and stuff like that. So that wow. would be neat so too. so stay tuned. Yeah, yeah. That. So it's going to be an exciting car cruise season. I will be at all of those. I yep. really enjoy it. Well, you know, any opportunity to not have to cook for me. <laughs> so if somebody else is cooking, then I'm happy to, to join in. So. Yeah, yeah. So those are a lot of fun, and you yeah. got to love all the cars. And you see a lot of the same faces and the same cars, but everyone's so nice, and uh, it's just a really fun environment. So. Yes. So we'll see you at the car cruises all season long. And, uh, of course, one of the big events that happened this past weekend was Motor City Comic Con. And what's cool about the Motor City Comic Con, in addition to the comics and collectibles and everything, they have a lot of celebrities. So a little bit later in this program, we're going to have an exclusive interview for you. So stay tuned. It's pretty yeah. exciting. Um, and finally, another thing that happened uh, on Sunday morning. Yes, I got up early Sunday morning. Luckily, it was right here at the Orient Center, but Orient Township had their Dragon Dash 5K, and I was here to cover it. Got my steps in as I'm walking the path, trying to keep up with these, <laughs> these runners and walkers. So yeah. here's a piece I put together on Sunday morning's Dragon Dash 5K. On the morning of Sunday, May 21st, well over 250 runners and walkers gathered at the Orient Center for the start of the 27th running of Orion Township's Dragon Dash 5K. Participants made their way to the starting line near the Orient Center's entrance, and at 9 a.m., the race was underway. Three, two, one, go! Why do we do it? We do it because it's a great family event. Uh, it's fun for, for runners to come out with their family, um, be outside, enjoy the fresh air, enjoy the trail, enjoy the parks. It's just a, it's a good, fun, well, fun if you're a runner. It's a fun event. Does it act as a fundraiser or does it just cover its own costs? It really just covers its own costs. Um, a year like this, um, we'll probably bring a little bit extra in that'll help cover other expenses you know, expenses for things like the concert series, things like that, that we uh, bring to the community for free. The certified course took runners and walkers out onto the Polly Ann Trail, past Scripps Road and Green Shield to Civic Center Park. There they turned around and made their way back to the finish line at the Orient Center. Crossing the finish line first was 30-year-old Alexander Pollock of Lake Orion, who finished with a time of 1653.2. The first female to cross the finish line was Misty Pollock with a time of 2108.4. Coincidentally, the husband and wife team took first place in their divisions back in 2019. Everyone who crossed the finish line got a medal. Nine different sponsors helped make the event possible, including Buffalo Wild Wings, Genesis Credit Union, and first-time sponsor, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce.
This is the first year for the Chamber. They've joined us this year as a park partner, so you're going to see their logo on a lot of my stuff. They're supporting all of our large special events this year. For complete race results, visit runsignup.com. From the Orient Center, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. So, yeah, that was a fun event, beautiful weather. And as I was uh, going through the video and looking up the results and everything, uh, the Pollock couple uh, that won first place in men and first place in women, I'm like, that name sounds familiar. And I went back and looked at some of the past races, and those two both came in first in their division in 2019. And they're always, like, right there at the top for these local races. So it's kind of funny that uh, they come for this and the snow dash and everything. Yeah. And they always do really well. So. Very nice. So, yeah. Um, all right. We now have Tyler Carpenter joining us here from Orient Township Parks and Rec. Uh, with the arrival of beautiful weather, there's no shortage of things uh, happening here in Orient Township. What's next on the calendar? Ooh, I mean, we have we have a lot of stuff going on right now and coming up. Um, the next the next one is probably June third. We have our our garage sale and toy and comic expo that everybody loves, and it's a great event. Yeah, I've taken part in the uh, toy and comic expo, and I sold everything that I brought with me. As a matter of fact. One of the other vendors bought my entire inventory before the doors opened to the public and wow. I left. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of uh, fun toys and collectibles and everything, but not only inside, but uh, it's fun when the garage sale moves outside. Mm -hmm. uh, any idea how many vendors you expect this year? Ooh, um, I, I don't have a number, but I believe the, the garage sale is sold out. So we have mm. the, max, oh, okay. the max vendors that we can have with a wait list. And I'm pretty sure the Toy and Comic Expo is uh, is sold out as well. So That's awesome. there's okay. there's gonna be a lot of different a lot of different stuff to to walk through and look at. So I highly recommend everybody, even if it's just a garage that you want to go to, you can still come out check out the expo or vice versa as well. Yeah. Now when they have the outdoor garage sale, they also invite Shredded along, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Talk about what Shredded does. Yep. Um, Shredded will be here from um, I believe their time frame is gonna be 11 to 1. And basically, if you have you know any any documents that you'd like to have professionally taken care of and disposed of correctly, you can come there. They'll let you know, um, you know, what qualifies, what doesn't qualify. So um, come out. They're only here for a limited time, pretty much just during the garage sale. So make sure if you have anything that you want to be um, discarded of properly, make sure to come out and talk to them from 11 to 1. That's awesome. So the event runs from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. indoors and outdoors. So make sure you get out there and check that out. Um, when I talked to Jennifer over at Parson Rec, she's like, why drive from neighborhood to neighborhood when you can come to one location? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. A little something for everybody. Yes. Yeah, it really um, does. And so then uh, let's get to the concert series. We're real close to kicking off mm -hmm. the concerts at Wildwood. Talk about that. Yeah, so every Tuesday there'll be a... Um, a free concert at Wildwood, and if anybody hasn't been to Wildwood, I highly recommend. It's such a nice, uh, a nice spot just to you know bring the family out, hang out. Um, every Tuesday, they're free concerts. Each Tuesday will be a different um, group or band that'll be performing, and they're top-notch performers. And it's a free summer activity outside at a beautiful venue, so you, you can't miss it. They're just a perfect evening. Yeah, have you been yeah. to Wildwood there? I have. I, I love it. I, I agree with Tyler. I think what a nice way to spend an evening in the summer. So, <laughs> it outside, is. Outside, beautiful venue, some great music. So. And we'll have our ONTV cameras there. We like to record those performances and play them back for anyone who missed them. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah, look at that. Uh, just big sweeping lawn there. Bring uh, your lawn chairs, bring your family. Uh, there's uh, is food and stuff provided, or are people pretty much encouraged to bring their own food. Um, so um, sometimes they do have vendors, but um, right now most of them, I believe, you can bring certain things in. Okay. But some of the I know a lot of the concerts at Wildwood. Um, Johnny Black does a lot at Wildwood, so they may be there as well. All right. So yeah, it's just a really fun night out. So check that out. That's going to be running all the way through August 22nd, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, yeah, and it does say great food and drink <laughs> options will be available. So uh, doors open at 6.30 p.m. and the performances usually run from 7 to 8.30 p.m. So yep. that's fantastic. Uh, summer Sizzle. I love Summer Sizzle. 
It's an event that takes place right here on the grounds of the Orient Center. What's what? What do you got planned for that this year? So they there's not too many details out on exactly what vendors are going to be attending yet, but. I mean, again, it's another outdoor summer activity. It is here at um, the Orient Center, and there's everything from games and activities for kids. There's vendors that are going to have um, different activities. It's really just a, a can't miss event between that and Big Rig Gig. You know, you can't. Oh, those yeah. are two events in the summer that you just can't miss. Yeah, hot dogs, cotton candy, yep. games. Uh, I know in the past, uh, Chautauqua Express has been there. Guy Lewis playing music, so I'm sure there'll be music and everything for families to enjoy yes. uh, that takes place on thursday june 22nd begins at 6 p.m and it's it's really cool that for me to go out back and just see that property out behind the orient center just completely filled right. with families having fun exactly and it's so nice out there too so it's uh mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to bring more people to the orient center and see what we what they might be missing out on and what they can see here. Yeah. One thing that's kind of exciting is probably by this time next year, that new addition to the Orient Center, the, the deck uh, mm -hmm. will be available and open, correct? Um, I don't know the exact dates on that, but yeah. it, it's in the works, and it's going to be it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. I can't have you heard about that. I have not. I'm yeah. like, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Orient Township received a grant through the county. I think the county is the one who made Orient Township aware of it, okay. and it, the the grant is to make improvements to senior centers throughout the country, and so um, Orient Township applied and and was. Uh, qualified to get it so what they're going to do with the money it. is build a deck around the the top floor of the orient mm -hmm. center for as a gathering space for seniors for lunches for, for events yeah, so nice. hopefully by this time next year hopefully. people will be able to gather on the the deck as well i love that so yeah, yeah pretty exciting uh and you you briefly touched on big rig gig another event i really enjoy talk about that that's kind of a end of the summer sort of a thing yeah so i mean Big rig gig, one of the most anticipated events of the year. Um, I was speaking with Jen, who is the programmer for that, and she did want to mention that everybody should put that in your calendar because this is the 20th anniversary. Oh. So, you know, you know, th there might be some big things coming to go with the big rig gig. So 20th year, so mark your calendars. It's going to be a big, big event. Yeah, it is. Over the past few years, in addition to the trucks and stuff that they have come, uh, if the weather cooperates, they have a hot air balloon, which they did last mm. year. Uh, a helicopter flies in and lands on the premises, and kids are invited to climb inside the helicopter and everything. So it's more than just the uh, the big rigs. There's all kinds of things to see and do at Friendship Park. So and, and that's usually what the first Friday of August. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's going to yeah, fall I, I on remember, August. 4th. I remember. I remember when it falls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, for a lot of families, it's become a tradition where yeah. they come back every year and uh, they're tooting the horns of the big trucks and uh, yeah it's a lot of a lot of fun and a great family event and so much to see and do like Orion Police Department has a presence uh, Oakland Township Sheriff's Office brings a couple of vehicles uh, there's semi trucks and tractors and diggers and dozers and all sorts of stuff so a really fun family event there's the helicopter um, I think that's from U of M it's like their life life uh, whatever they call yeah. it but yeah uh, lots of stuff to see so that's oh, yeah. a really fun event yeah and then uh, car bingo that I know that kind of started during COVID as sort of a hands-off sort of a family event to get people to come in uh, and that was so popular they continued doing it so what's up for car bingo this season yeah so we do car bingo um, I think it's about four times a year now okay. and even in the winter it is huge the parking lot's full so basically people you come in you get a packet with several bingo cards they do different versions of bingo so not just your stereotypical five across okay. um, and you go on to a certain radio station we have our we do different radio hosts each yeah. each car bingo um, event and you just you have a great time with your family or friends and in, in your car and you win some cool prizes by different <laughs> sponsors that can range from um, you know, donuts to gift cards to local businesses. So it's a great event. You get to listen to the radio and our fun radio hosts and hang out in the car. And, and even if it's bad weather, we still do it. So you can be in the warmth of your car right? and, yeah. and have some fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, uh, sometimes fun. my desk is, you know, right by the window there. And sometimes I'll forget it's going on. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'll be sitting at my desk and I hear beep, beep. And I'm like, what is going on out there? And then, oh, they're playing car beep. It can get a little rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, a little competitive. Yeah. Uh, the next one is scheduled for Wednesday, July 19th. Begins at 1 p.m. in the afternoon to 2.30. The kids will be off school, so yep. uh, why not take them out and have a chance to win some exactly. prizes? Exactly. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and then, uh, this is new to me, the Health and Wellness Fair, talk about that. Yep, um, so I don't have a lot of information on that one, um, but yep, it's the first time that they're going to be running that as well. It's um, free to attend. There should be everything from food, music, games, um, a few local vendors as well, just to kind of promote, um, you know, health, health and wellness, really, yeah. uh, mental health, and, and just kind of, you know, living a, um, you know, enjoyable life and, you know, kind of going over... Um, just various aspects of health and wellness, unfortunately. Yep. Great. Yeah, it says here giveaways, great. blood pressure yep. checks, raffles. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's great. i got to get that in my calendar. Friday, yes. June 16th, uh, beginning at 9 a.m. to noon, refreshments will be available. Yep. So okay. that's great to see. And then, of course, throughout the summer season, there's sports and uh, so what it, what can people sign up for this summer? Yep, so that's a lot of actually what I run with um, uh, Orient Township. So. Uh, we actually have our fall registration for like youth programs are open right now. So we have our, our soccer, our baseball, and our softball programs that you can register now through July 17th. Um, the season starts the first week of August, runs through October. Um, we also have adult cornhole now, which has been amazing. It's so <laughs> much fun. Everybody could, you know, we actually do that here at the Orient Center as well, out in the backyard. So that's a fun event. We have, if you haven't been to Friendship Park, we have some beautiful pickleball courts out there yes, now. Yes, they are. Yes. Very nice. Um, yep. So we have our pickleball lessons running um, all summer long, beginner and immediate. If, you, um, if you're a new player or returning player, check out our pickleball lessons. And we're launching some new pickleball events now. So if you are oh. past the lessons part, we're doing like exhibition games and kind of going into tournaments and leagues. So if you're more... You know, you're past the uh, lessons. Check out the exhibition games that we're going to be doing over the summer as I well. I get to know. I'm, I'm <laughs> making notes right now. <laughs> <laughs> Have you played? So, oh, yeah, I play pickleball. Yeah. I've never played. Tell, never? tell us oh, what's your experience been like. It's fun. Actually, I took a lesson through Parks and Rec a couple of years ago because I had no experience with it whatsoever and learned all the basics. Um, but until you really start playing with those who play, then you learn what you don't know. <laughs> but no, it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, if you've never played pickleball, it's kind of like a cross between tennis and table tennis, mm -hmm. but you're standing on the table. Mm -hmm. So you have a paddle and this wiffle ball, and you play with a partner, and um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. There's rules. You have to stay out of the kitchen, which yeah. is fine with me, <laughs> but, like, but it's, it's a lot of fun. In fact, I played this morning. I had... Uh, the day off today and so before coming here that's that's what I was doing wow. with my uh, pickleball friends. What's the yeah. scoring? What do you play to? You play to 11. To so 11 unless it's tied you have to win by two. I see. So if you know you get up to like 10-10 then you have to you have to get 12 and not have the other team score at all. Okay. So. But only on your serves. When it's your team's turn to serve, that's mm -hmm. the only time you can score. So. Kind of like volleyball sort of a thing. Yeah. So, yeah. That's great. I, I have friends that play, but I, I haven't done it yet. Oh, you can have to you give just it a show try. up by yourself and be, you know, partnered up with somebody? How how do these uh, leagues and tournaments uh, handle that? Yep. So um, uh, a lot of we do like open times where you can just show up and you can, it's kind of like a pickup court. So you mm -hmm. rotate in and out. So if it's something that you just kind of want to try out, you can go and try out. We'll, you'll get, you know, it's kind of like a self-running thing. You get paired up with somebody, play a game, and you come off. Somebody else goes on the court. Um, lessons, same thing. You can sign up by yourself and just, you know, there'll, there'll be a class, and we have our, our professional teacher that comes out, teaches you mm -hmm. the, basically the ins and outs of pickleball. I, awesome. I would definitely recommend taking mm -hmm. a lesson before yeah, just yeah. showing up, you know. So. He's a great teacher, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is very good. That's so, awesome. Yep. Friendship Park is, is just really been developing and growing, and uh, we touched on it just a little bit earlier, but uh, the Miracle League field uh, there is just awesome. And I would imagine their season should be real close to kicking off. Are you familiar with the Miracle League uh, season at all? A, a little bit. We, um, we do work a lot together because, you know, the, the, I use our baseball fields and, and vice versa, and we have the concession stand there now, too, which they operate as well. Um, so they start, um, I believe it's the first weekend in, in June. Okay. And they run all summer long. So opening okay. opening day is right around. Yeah. The yeah. I know there's a yeah. lot of, we have a group called K Friends at my church. And they have leagues and they play mm -hmm. there as well. So it's it's so nice. It's such a great field. Oh, it's so, yeah. That's amazing. So, yeah, yeah. Yep. 
And something else that's not on my list, but I'm looking forward to, uh, Orient Township is having their second annual yep. kickball tournament. Oh. Are you playing kickball this year? So I'm not playing. I help, <laughs> I help organize it. So okay. I, um, I'm working that day, helping make sure, you know, umpires are there, the everybody's at the field at the right times, and, you know, scheduling the playoffs and doing all of that. So it's... It's a fun event. I don't. Okay. I wish I could play, but it's also <laughs> fun to organize it because it does. Everything goes towards charity. It's a fun, fun event, and if you really want to see some people get very competitive over <laughs> kickball, it's a very fun day to come and watch that. So, is that something you bring your own team, or if there's well, like you get put on a team? How does what that happens is the township has a staff team, okay. and then they put out a challenge, an invitation to other municipalities, mm -hmm. other oh, community groups. Okay. Uh, they can all sign up. I don't know if there's a cutoff yet as far as forming a team and joining, um, but the neat thing about it is um, even though the championship game is held at Miracle Field, all the other games, the round robin games, the elimination games take place on all the fields there at, okay. at Friendship Park. So it's really neat mm -hmm. to see all that space being utilized. We're actually expanding this year. So we're going to be using okay. Civic Center Park and Friendship Park. Oh, we're going to have so okay. many teams. Yep. So wow. we're going to have yep, 16 different municipalities playing each other. And So who are some of the, what are some of the municipalities that are playing this year? Um, so we have anywhere from, we have SEMCOG, which is the organization of Southeast Michigan um, council members. Okay. We have Rochester, we have um, Macomb County and Macomb Township. Oh. Um, we have Oxford, so the Oxford Lake Orion rivalry, obviously, yeah. you know, <laughs> they have to play each other, you right. know, to get that going. <laughs> um, so we have a little bit of from all over. Um, we still have a few more teams that are signing up, so okay. it's going to be a lot of fun. That's now, um, fun. Chris Barnett, our Orient Township Supervisor, mm -hmm. his brother, Brian, Brian is yep. the mayor of Rochester Hills. Mm -hmm. And not only did they play last year, they won the whole kit and caboodle. Oh. And it was kind of emotional at the end of the championship game when they won. They were presented with the check, which I think was $10,000, yep. right? And what they did is they donated it right back to Miracle Field. Oh, it was, that's so nice. I'm getting goosebumps thinking yeah. about it. They donated their winnings back to Miracle Field, and I just thought that was such a great thing. That so, is great. so we'll be seeing Chris and Brian going head to head again this year, and all <laughs> the other teams that are taking part. So, yeah, that's a lot of fun. It's gonna be fun. It's it's so much fun. It's, and we moved it back, so hopefully we have better weather this year. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I thanks. feel like I need to go get like a part-time job with like the township <laughs> right. so I can play. Like Are I want to play. Right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm a little bit competitive. So. Yeah. <laughs> So, Tyler, thanks for coming Thank out. Thank you. Thanks for so having me. So much going on. I hope we covered everything. But, uh, yeah, Friendship Park, uh, Civic Center Park, lots of stuff going on. So, yeah. thanks for coming out. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for having too. me. Yes. It was fun. Thank you. All right. Uh, returning to our studio just recently is one of our longtime uh, producers, uh, very talented individual, Bob Lowe. He was in again recently playing some uh, country songs and some uh, oldies. Uh, so, here's a little clip from Bob Lowe. Well, hello everybody. This is Bob Lowe once again. I'm going to do a little music for you, and hopefully you'll like one or two of them. I'm going to start off with an old Chuck Berry tune that uh, even Emmy Lou Harris had a big hit off of this one. Here we go.
Taylor V said to old folks, it goes to show you never can tell. They had a high five phone on board, but they let it last. 700 little records, all rock and rhythm and jazz. But when the sun went down, the rapid tempo of the music fell. Say to thee, said to old folks, I told the show you never can go. So that's Bob Lowe and a very talented individual. And uh, I was telling Tracy, the guitar that you see him playing, he makes the guitars himself. I just think that's amazing. Yeah, so he cuts the wood and strings them up and sometimes he sells them, but I could only imagine the collection of guitars he has at home. Right, well just the talent, I mean to be able to play and sing, but then to yeah. be able to also make the instrument, I mean yeah. that's that's fantastic. We always love having Bob in our studio. So, uh, next up, uh, the uh, spring sports season is uh, kind of winding down, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's Joey Tysick to talk about what's happening in high school sports. Hello and welcome back to Lake Orion Sports Update. I'm your host Joey Tysick, and today we're back as the spring sports season is winding down and the teams approach the playoffs. Today we will give updates on lacrosse, soccer, and softball. The girls lacrosse team has also been having a successful season as they sit at 12-2 and two on the season, as their only losses came from Seaholm, where they lost by one score, and against Bloomfield Hills, where they lost by four. They were one of the top teams in the OAA, and because of the season they had, they are now able to get into the first round of regionals without playing in a pre-regional game. Lake Orion will play at Oxford on Wednesday, where they will take on Davison or Howell. Good luck, Dragons. The girls' varsity soccer team is also approaching districts with a good end to the season. They had a five-game win streak where they beat Romeo, Midland Dow, Sterling Heights Stevenson, and rival Clarkston. Unfortunately, they did drop their season finale to Notre Dame Prep, 1-2, but they finished with a record of 11-4-4, while tying for third in the OAA White standings. Again, we know this team is in a lot of one-goal games where they can definitely make some noise moving forward. They will look to play Rochester Adams on Wednesday, who is 12-5-2 and, and finished fourth in the red. Adams had a good season, but they lost to Clarkson while Lake Orion was able to beat Clarkson. It seems that the two teams could be evenly matched, and we can't wait to see what happens. We mentioned last week that the softball team has also been putting in the work this year and are sitting now at a 21-4 season record. They will have one more week of regular season play before they play Waterford Kettering in the first round of the playoffs. Lake Orion did lose a doubleheader to Stony Creek on the road on May 9th, but Stony is one of the best teams around. On May 10th, Lake Orion was able to bounce back and beat North Farmington in both games. The first game was really close as Lake Orion would win 10-9 and then 12-0 in just five innings in the second game. 
Then playing for the third day in a row, Lake Orion would come back home against Oxford and Owen TV was there to record the game. It was finally some beautiful sunny weather as the crosstown rivals faced off. Riley Limberger was on the mound for Lake Orion and she has quickly become one of the best for the team being only a sophomore. Riley had good command of the strike zone and Oxford was not able to catch up almost all game. Then on offense, Lake Orion started off as quick as they could as Sydney Bell opened the game with a single. Later in the inning, with two outs, Anna Gardner would hit a soft one to third, and Oxford made a slight mistake on the throw, leading to Gardner being safe with Bell in scoring position. The throwing errors definitely seemed to be a struggle for Oxford. Gardner then stole second, putting two runners in position, which led to Jada Lopez hitting a ball straight to the pitcher, but once again, Oxford overthrew the first base and allowed two runs in and put Lopez on third. After that, it just seemed like the floodgates opened as Limberger would RBI single, followed by an Avery Case single, Addison Dukas RBI double, Ellie Britt walked to load the bases, Alexis Hazen RBI single, Bell two RBI double, Madison Eckert RBI double, Gardner two RBI double, Lopez single off air, and then it was capped off with a Limberger home run, giving Ello the 13 to zero lead after one inning. Oxford was able to get out of the inning, but the damage had been done. Limberger continued to subdue Oxford's offense, giving up only one hit in the game. Lake Orion scored two more runs in the third to win the game 15-0 with a mercy in three innings. The following day, Lake Orion would play Macomb, Dakota, where they would lose 3-4, but bounced back winning against Langsburg 11-1 and Swan Valley 5-3 the coming days. On May 18th, Lake Orion would be back home for a doubleheader against Rochester Adams. Riley Limberger was on the mound once again for the Dragons, and that meant it was sure to be exciting. While Lily Lutzka was on the mound for Adams, who also proved to be a force. Lake Orion got on the board in the first once again as Jada Lopez got an RBI double, but that was all for the inning. Lake Orion got another run in the third with a solo shot to left field from Grace Luby, giving Lake Orion the 2-0 lead. In the fourth, Adams had a few runners in scoring position, but were only able to bring in one, reducing the lead to just a run. Then in the fifth inning, Lake Orion would be able to get another home run, this time from Addison Dukas bringing in three. One more run would come across as Gardner would score on a wild pitch and then throwing error to third. Then to round out the inning, Lopez hit a solo home run to extend the lead seven to one. Adams would respond with another run in the top of the sixth. However, Lake Orion added more to the lead in the bottom of the inning as Sidney Bell got an RBI double, followed by a Gardner RBI single, then Alexis Hazen finished off the inning with a two-run double as Lake Orion took the lead 11-2. This would also be the final score as Limberger went the distance and stopped Adams from making a late rally. Now Lake Orion will look to finish off the regular season strong and prepare for their district matchup against Waterford Kettering on June 3rd. In the next episode, we will give updates on the playoff matches that are in the coming weeks, along with recapping the track season as the OAA championships and regionals will have concluded. Good luck, Dragons, on the end of the season and playoffs. For past episodes of the Sports Update, head on over to OrionONTV.org and click the ONTV On Demand link. There you'll find all of ONTV's community programming, news, sports, concerts, and government meetings. You can also watch us on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV all in HD. Just add the Cablecast channel to your lineup to enjoy local programming at its best. For even more Lake Orion sports, check out our YouTube channel for our full game coverage. Visit youtube.com and search for Orion Neighborhood Television. Also make sure to catch all of our replays Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. along with Saturdays at 1 p.m. We'll see you next time. Yeah, it's hard to believe the high school sports season is winding down for I the know. school year. Graduations right around the corner. Yeah. Uh, this school year went by so it, fast. It really did. I, I don't know how we're already at the last two <laughs> weeks, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the last so, couple weeks. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, earlier in the show, I mentioned that the Motor City Comic Con took place this past weekend. I go every year. I have a lot of fun. And like I said, in, in addition to comics and collectibles and posters and art, uh, the thing I enjoy most is meeting some celebrities that they bring out. Uh, a lot of them you have to pay money to get an autograph or get a photo with them. And I 
picked a couple that I wanted to do that with. Uh, I met Michael Bean, who's one of my favorite actors. He was in Terminator and Aliens and Tombstone. And uh, there were people there from Star Trek. And Carl Weathers was there, who not only is currently in The Mandalorian, but he played Apollo Creed in the Rocky movies, and he was in the Predator movie. So it's really cool to have an opportunity to meet some of the heroes that I grew up with and to meet them in person and have conversations with them. And uh, so to my surprise, on Saturday, as I was roaming around with the camera, uh, we saw that actor Tony Danza was there. You may know him from Taxi and your favorite show. Who's, Who's the, the boss? boss? Growing <laughs> up, my favorite show, yes. So we approached him and asked yeah. if we can do an interview, and it's to our surprise, he agreed. Wow. So uh, here's a really nice interview we had with uh, the Tony Danza. <laughs> you get a song here with me. <laughs> Thanks for coming to Detroit. First oh, of all, you having fun here? <laughs> it's quite it's quite a thing. It really is, yeah. And I'm happy to be I'm really and I just was talking to a, a Red Wing fan and I told him that I was talking to Chris Chelios last night yeah. and he went big, so I'm I'm in over here. I know what to say. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, how did you get taxi? What does it mean to you that have landed that series? Well, you know, I I, uh, I was a prize fighter, and uh, I had a fight on a Friday night. I broke my hand. I was in a cast and a big black guy. I won the fight, but I got beat up. I got beat up a little bit. And my and uh, by some miracle of miracles, that Monday I ended up in Jim Brooks, James L. Brooks's office, who was casting, uh, was auditioning Mandy Patinkin for Judd Hirsch's part, for the part of Alex. And I went in and they sent me in and, and it was, the part was written for an Irish heavyweight named Phil Ryan. <laughs> and so they saw me, I had a cast on my hand, a bloody, a black eye. I, I looked like a fighter and I got the part somehow. <laughs> that's, that's really what happened. Is that one of the greatest ensembles in the history of television? I, I, I really do think so. I think, uh, I think, you know, there, there were pol politics involved in the fact that it didn't last any longer than five years. But, you know, the other day, I, I've been dating a girl and she likes taxi. So I said, ah, I don't, come on, I don't. she put it on. I watched 19 episodes. I couldn't stop. I just said, oh, it's so good. Let me see another one. Oh, you know, so I really think highly of the show. And, you know, it's one of the greatest groups of friends. We still see each other. We all, we get together on a Zoom every month. We, uh, whenever we, I played uh, the Carlisle last week in New York City, and uh, Chris Lloyd and his wife came, Judd and his wife came, and then Carol met us. And we, had, we met on Sunday, and we were on Columbus Avenue at my friend Manny's place, and um, they took a picture, and it got like 10,000 views. I People went crazy it. over it. So, yeah. yeah, it's just a great group of guys, a great, great group. Like, now, I just love them so much. A lot of actors would kill the land taxi. You follow up taxi with who's the boss? Come on, one two punch? Well, I was pretty fortunate, yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty fortunate run, that's for sure. And you know, you're right about that. You know, Hollywood, uh, it's based on pe new people, it's based on people getting a break, but not everybody gets a break like taxi. That's the difference. And I think, you know, I'm really grateful for that. And, and just to be to be proud of being part of that, you know, it's something that I'm really proud of. One more question. Sure. I'm watching Friends, Phoebe talks about the Elton John song. The most romantic song ever was The Way We Were. Uh, see, I, I think the one that Elton John wrote for um, that guy on Who's the Boss. <laughs> what song was that, Phoebs? Um, hold me close, young Tony Danza. <laughs> Well, you know, that's been going on now for a long time. And, and, you know, as you know, recently Elton John actually sang it with Tony Danza in the Lyra. Uh, he and Phoebe, K uh, he and uh, uh, Courtney Cox and Ed Sheeran, they got together and sang it with Elton John. And he actually sang the right, you know, the, he sang the right words. That's awesome. <laughs> so it's been a long, this thing has been... Uh, it's been, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy that, you know, it, it became such a big thing, you know. 
because if you remember, like you say, Phoebe, they say, uh, she says my favorite love song is that, that song about the guy from Who's the Boss? <laughs> and they're like, what are you talking about? So it's pretty cool. It's really... Well, thank you for your time and oh, congratulations on your career. Absolute pleasure well, meeting you. You've got a good looking cameraman. <laughs> I'm showing her the ropes. So. <laughs> thank good you very much. Okay, guys. Appreciate thank it. You. My uh, helper, uh, Jill, she was floored at the end when he was like, you got a good-looking camera guy. <laughs> she just thought that was great. She got a picture with him and everything. So, but, yeah, how great was that? That was he a was, great interview. He was so wow. nice. And a really weird coincidence happened. Uh, on Sunday, this past Sunday, I was watching a show on HBO called Barry, and Henry Winkler's in that who plays uh, Fonzie on Happy Days. Yeah. And his character gets a call from an agent saying that Daniel Day-Lewis wants to play him in a movie about his life. And he goes, this better not be Tony Danza messing with me. And I was like, what are the odds of that, that I would see that the day after I got to interview right? So that was pretty funny. So, yeah, Aww. thanks to Tony for that interview. That was really great. And you'll see more of my coverage of Motor City Comic Con on our upcoming newscast. And I think I got enough stuff to maybe turn it into a whole half-hour show. Oh. So look for that on ONTV uh, real soon. Uh, next up, we have uh, Inside the Dragons segment that uh, you might be interested in, mm -hmm. uh, LOHS robotics team. You yes. have someone involved with the robotics program? Well, actually, I know a couple of the students on the robotics team because they also participated in Lake Orion this past school year for the first time took part in the unified robotics team. So um, just like they have unified basketball and some of the other um, other sports. Um, so the unified robotics, they brought that to Lake Orion this year. And my son was one of the participants, so I got to know a couple of the, uh, the students who are on the robotics team. And that was, they are just the nicest, the yeah, nicest kids. Smart, they compete all nice. over. They yes. do really well. So let's they take a look. They work hard too. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Let's take a look at the LOHS robotics team. Lake Orion High School robotics program has a long history of success and achievement. This year's team soared past all of them. After winning multiple competitions during the school year, Team 302 took a bus to Houston for the World Championships in mid-April. There were 619 teams and LOHS competed in the Curie Division with over 78 other teams. They ranked 14th. After that, and won their division with an alliance to advance to the Einstein field. And their alliance ended up third overall. Definitely make it to Einstein and walking out of that kind of tunnel like they do, you know, in football with the steam and the lights and the, the chanting and the clapping. And, it, you know, it really felt like, you know, this is the championship. Like we finally made it. This is what the weeks and the months of preparation has prepared us for. So Houston was a very, very, very fun experience. Um, there was a lot to do at Houston. I know I personally attended some conferences held by, held by other teams where I uh, was able to expand my knowledge on fundraising, sustainability, improving uh, advocacy efforts in our community and beyond. Um, I know that I gained a lot of uh, very, very nice information from the world experience. I got to collaborate with some other teams from Holly, Michigan. I collaborated with a team from uh, Southern California. That was really fun. Um, and then I got to interact with other teams from Michigan um, who were coming to the World Championship and we were all um, sharing that experience together. Team 302 also received the Sustainability Award for the first time, celebrating a team that has a sustainable program and a strong business plan. This was a unique group, pushing the program to greater heights. I think this year we were moving as a team unit. Everyone was unified in our goals. Everyone knew what we wanted to achieve. We were all very, very determined um, as a group, as, as a unit. We were a family almost. Um, we're one team. We're not six separate sub teams. We are one 302 family. Um, when we first started, once we you know finished the planning process and we knew kind of what we wanted the robot to look like, that's when we knew we, that we were going to be a strong group and that we were going to work well together. Um, of course, we faced our challenges, um, but we faced it together and we faced it as a team. 
um, and I think that's what made us stronger. You know, through comp after comp, um, it just got better and better when we got, you know, closer as a whole team. So yeah, the robotics team doing yeah. some great things. Uh, we had a couple of interns over the past couple of months who put together a nice little program and followed them throughout their season okay. and competition and everything. So look for that on ON TV. But yeah, yeah great things they, happen. They work there. hard. I know we were just talking about they yeah. they meet during their in season six days a week. Mm. So for like three hours each night in the evenings, school nights, and then all day on Saturday. And then I think sometimes on Sundays if they need the extra time. Wow. So there's a kickoff the first Saturday in January where they find out their requirements and then it's just go. They only have, I think, I don't know if it's quite eight weeks before competitions start and yeah. they have to have their robot built and hmm. there's different points for you know meeting different specifications and yeah, it's a definitely a talented group of students. Yeah, so. and then they compete in regional and division and yeah. state and you don't always make it to right. worlds so yeah, yeah they yeah. have to compete their way up so definitely got to be passionate you, to, to you, give up that much time to be involved with that. you That's definitely great. do and they are they are so yeah, yeah. Uh, as we were talking about a little bit ago uh, big weekend this weekend Memorial Day weekend yes uh, Lake Orion uh, just they they go all out Memorial Day weekend to pay tribute to those that uh, lost their lives serving our country. Um, I know on Memorial Day Monday, mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole slate of events. Some of them might be touched on on quick hits, what we're going to get to in a moment. But um, I usually dedicate my whole day to covering all the events. And Steve, you're going to be helping us out on uh, Monday morning. So things kick off on Monday morning at about 9 a.m. There's actually two simultaneous events that are going on. That's why Steve is going to be helping out. There's a little ceremony uh, at, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the cemetery, e Evergreen? East Lawn. East Lawn on Orion Road. Um, so there's going to be a little ceremony over there by the, uh, the veterans monument that they have at the cemetery. While that's going on, uh, Orion Township is kicking off their 5K. Uh, that is going to start off in downtown Lake Orion. I believe they run out onto Pink Creek Trail, mm -hmm. uh, come back. That acts as a fundraiser for the Veterans uh, Memorial on Lapeer Road. Right. Uh, then after that, there's a little ceremony that takes place in Children's Park. Uh, they do a ceremony uh, for those who lost their lives at sea, and so they do a wreath ceremony in Pink Creek. Uh, after that's done, we <laughs> all move to Flint and Broadway, yeah. where the parade uh, takes off from Blansom's Elementary School, travels down Flint Street, makes a right on Broadway, and goes mm -hmm. to the Eman Center. That's been a long-time tradition here in Lake Orion. Uh, they'll do a little presentation for the Honored Veteran of the Year. I'm not sure who that is yet. We'll find out at the parade. And then things come to an end with the big ceremony at the Orion Veterans Memorial on Lapeer Road. Yep. Uh, that usually runs about 45 minutes to an hour with guest speakers and uh, all sorts of stuff and music. So yep. uh, it's really something to see. So um, if you're you know, not having the, the barbecue with the family, come on out and honor those who lost their lives uh, defending our country and, and attend some of those ceremonies that are gonna be going on. Uh, throughout the day on Monday. Uh, let's see if Becky touches on that on this week's Quick Hits. On Friday, the Orient Center will be hosting Senior Social Hour from 11 a.m. to noon. Seniors meet on the second and fourth Fridays of each month for a chance to get out and socialize. Each week features a different topic of conversation. The Orient Library will be hosting Sensational Storytime on Friday from 11 a.m. to noon. This program is a welcoming, interactive environment designed for children with special needs and sensory-seeking kids. All ages are welcome. Well, lots of great things happening in Lake Orion on Memorial Day. The day begins with the 7th Annual Orion Veterans Memorial Day Run. The run begins at Children's Park and runners have a choice of a 5K or 5-mile race. Register ahead of time at eastsideracing.com. The day continues with the Memorial Day Parade in downtown Lake Orion. The parade begins at 11 a.m. Viewers are invited to line up along Flint and Broadway Streets to watch the parade. At 1 o'clock, the Memorial Day ceremony will be taking place. Orion residents are invited to honor those who have died in service to our nation. The ceremony will take place at the Orion Veterans Memorial located at 532 South Broadway Street. 
Well, looks like we have a beautiful week ahead of us. Wednesday's forecast is calling for partly cloudy skies with a high of 71 and a low of 54. Mostly sunny on Thursday with a high of 64 and low of 45. Mostly sunny again on Friday with a high of 72 and low of 42. Partly cloudy on Saturday with a high of 76 and low of 48. Partly cloudy again on Sunday with a high of 77 and low of 50. And partly cloudy for our Memorial Day with a high of 82 and low of 55. Well, that's it for this week's Zone TV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. So it looks like we can look forward to some beautiful weather this yes, weekend. Yes, What is like your weekend gorgeous. looking like? What are you going to do Memorial Day weekend? Oh, you know what? I probably will have to do a little more yard work, mm -hmm. and then probably go to a, there's a, my neighborhood is going to be doing a little uh, barbecue down at our beach, and mm. so I'll probably join join the neighbors in for that. So yeah. <laughs> how about you? You have anything fun? Planned? Other than working on uh, Monday, I don't have anything planned yet. So uh, maybe something will come up, or uh, go see a movie or something. Yeah. Sometimes it's nice just to have those weekends where there's not really a whole lot on the, yeah. on the schedule. Yeah, considering how so. busy this past weekend was, sometimes it's nice just to relax a little bit. Yes. Now, something I'm looking forward to in two weeks, you know, I like going to these conventions and expos and things. Well, in two weeks, I found out there's a, a fan expo in Philadelphia, and there's going to be several celebrities there. And the one that I'm really looking forward to meeting is Michael J. Fox. Oh. Uh, he's going to be making an appearance there. He does a lot of these shows because the money that he raises doing uh, autographs and photos and stuff, that goes to his foundation, the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Okay. And um, so I figure any any money that I spend meeting Michael J. Fox will be going to a good cause. Yeah. And uh, I've met most of the cast of Back to the Future, and I have their signatures on my uh, Back to the Future DeLorean, Hot Wheels, and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I need Michael J. Fox. <laughs> I need, need his signature oh. to kind of... Complete to that. complete that. Yeah, see, when I think Michael J. Fox, I always think of Alex P. Keaton. Yeah, right? Family Ties. <laughs> family that's ties. where it all started. That was yeah. a great show. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like Back to the Future, that's one of my top five favorite movies of all time. Top and, five. So what are your top five? Uh, well, you know, I was 10 years old when Star Wars came okay. out, so that's number one on my list. Okay. Uh, I absolutely love Raiders of the Lost Ark, okay. which uh, they're going to be having a sequel coming out in June. Have you heard about this? I have not. No. Yeah, it's uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, it's oh. called. And apparently this is going to be the last one with Harrison Ford. Okay. Um, and uh, Phoebe, what's the actress's name? Phoebe Waller-Bridges, I think is her I'm name. I'm not good with it. She's, <laughs> I don't know if she's a relative or how she connects to the story, but uh, this will be the fifth Indiana Jones movie coming out this June. So, wow. Yeah, and I okay. remember seeing the original in theaters and absolutely loving it. Yeah. And, and then Back to the Future, that's one of my all-time okay. favorites. As a matter of fact, I write an article for a uh, Cruise in Media, which is a local automotive uh, magazine for the Detroit area, and they promote car shows and stuff like that. And I write under the name Joe Hollywood, and I do articles on TV and movie cars. Yeah. And the one that I'm currently working on right now is going to be on the DeLorean time machine. Okay. And so I've been in touch with not only the guy who did the special effects work on Back to the Future, but the guy who created Back to the Future, him and I have been communi communicating back and forth. So That has to be fun. Yeah, yeah. so that's going to appear in the Cruise and Media uh, Woodward Dream Cruise issue so look for that okay. uh, coming up soon so yeah, yeah. and so your uh, your venture to go meet Michael J Fox I'm assuming on an upcoming episode we might get a little snippet of that we'll <laughs> see I'm not sure I'm going to take any video uh, okay. with me or if I'm just going to go as a just, fan just soak we'll it in see. yeah there's yeah, yeah. Th there's something to be said for that too yeah you know we yeah. want you especially always having the camera sometimes it's nice <laughs> to just be there and That's you know, right. soak it up. I so. live life looking through a viewfinder, <laughs> right. so yeah. sometimes I just want to go for fun. So uh, That pretty much winds down this episode of Orient Today. Tracy, thanks for joining me again. Thanks for having me, Joe. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. Have a great okay. Memorial Day weekend. Same to all you folks out there. Have a great weekend, and uh, maybe we'll see you on Monday. And our ONTV offices obviously will be closed on Monday, so we'll see you in a couple of weeks with the next uh, edition of Orient Today.